Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Rekha Matra. I am your resource person for the topic Trust Analysis. In the previous slide, we have already covered contextual analysis and the topic activity analysis. In this particular uh, session, we would be covering task delineation, competency alliances, performance analysis and discrepancy analysis. So let us move on to task delineation. As the name suggests, it is grouping the activities into tasks and that is known as task delineation. It involves the subjective decision making and should be undertaken only by people who know and understand their job properly. There is no set rule regarding the number of tasks to be delineated, that how it has to be delineated to the people. They should not be so few in number so that one cannot review them and form a clear job picture. There should not be so many differences among the activities that are not readily apparent or maybe you can call it it is not visible and their number becomes cumbersome or for, for performance appraisal and other purposes. Continuing with this topic, the task should be balanced in terms of the number of activities that each comprises of. If one task has too many activities, then it needs to be divided further into two or more number of tasks. Let us take an example. While delineating a tour executive task, one should not call handling tours is a task because this term covers too many activities in itself. Ideally, the handling of tours should be broken down into requiring special skills such as costing of tour, tour activities requiring few skills such as getting the reconfirmation of hotel booking from the travel agent or the tour operator as well as getting the customer support for every step. Next is, after the tasks have been delineated it is a good idea to rate the importance of the job and assess the percentage of time spent by the job incumbent on each. That how much time job incumbent is spending on each time. So that should be looked upon. Ideally, a job incumbent needs different types and different competencies to perform the job task properly. Competency analysis helps to identify the necessary competencies for the task that have been delineated. Competencies can be further divided into five main types and they are knowledge, skills, abilities, orientation and experience. Out here we would be understanding orientation in more detail because it is a general attitude which reflects the value of the job holder. For example, in case of a front office assistant in a hotel, respect for the guest may be deemed to be an essential orientation. In that case, the front office uh, person must be made to understand their job properly and they should understand that why do they need to respect the guest. Let us take an example of an orientation description. For the position of district health officer, situation says with the increasing government emphasis on community participation and collaborative work in matters concerning the health, the district health manager needs to see the community and its various health agencies as resources. He or she needs to respect and be willing to use community traditions and customs that would help, that has a good health. Next is, the district health manager should be a proactive person 
in identifying and seeking community resources that can be harnessed for promoting health programs he or she should be oriented towards innovation and experimentation in solving problems and should encourage the doctors and other staff members in the district health clinics and hospitals to be similarly oriented he or she needs to be dedicated in providing robust and creative leadership for subordinates including the people the those who are on the panel of staff at the district health clinics as well as hospitals finally the district health should learn and experiment in this position let us discuss the activity in detail in activity orientation description should be given for hotel industry job holders another process that may be completed in identifying the job incumbents present level of each identified competency like what are the competencies which are required for performing a certain task a five point scale is generally recommended for this purpose so that the person can be rated based upon the type of activity the same group is assigned with the task of establishing the competencies with the possible exclusion of the job incumbent depending on his or her level of insight which may take this assessment forward now let us discuss the difference between the activity task and the job so what is the difference activity is the smallest unit into which work can be divided also it can be observed often bound by the time period activity analysis is based on the information there are three main contributions of information which are required for carrying out the activity analysis furthermore there are several methods of collecting information from the contributors the task is the distinct set of work activities carried out for a distinct purpose task analysis can help supervisors design training programs performance appraisal and planning process for the work task analysis can be defined as identifying the task of a particular job in a particular organizational context by analyzing any discrepancies which are uncovered in the process job is defined as the type of position which is created within an organization for recruiting a person now let us discuss the steps of analysis the analysis can be said to have the following steps which are contextual analysis performance analysis and discrepancy analysis task analysis can also be used as a supervisory tool to improve the functioning of the employees as training modules can be designed keeping the various tasks in mind performance of the employees can be monitored and also work planning can be carried out keeping in mind the various tasks which are to be completed next is performance analysis the primary purpose of performance analysis is to evaluate the impact of a job how effective it is being done or has been done this step consists of assessing how well the job incumbent has performed the task for which he or she is responsible the effectiveness of a task can be measured in of its outcome or the result as well as in terms of its process or how it has to be performed data may be gathered indicating both kinds of effectiveness for example one can evaluate 
the task of taking customer orders concerning the number of orders which are taken that is called the outcome and the time spent on the task or the number of mistakes made in carrying out the process generally task analysis blocks the human resource development reason being the task itself is divided into different sections next is discrepancy analysis it identifies any dis- any discrepancies that becomes obvious due to the previous five steps out here discrepancy itself rationalizes or shows the gap for example discrepancy may exist between activities which are reported by the job incumbent and those reported by the role set numbers between activities which are reported and those observed or expected between the importance of a task and the time spent in completing it between the needed competencies and existing competencies and so on these gaps may indicate a need for specific remedial measures such as redefining the role training additional work planning delegating increased monitoring or counseling it is good to check periodically for discrepancies between the job definition as reflected in the delineated task and the actual job performance moving further performance information can be obtained by anyone or a combination of the following methods the job incumbent may monitor the time spent on each activity the role set members may analyze the importance attributed to various tasks versus the time spent on them trained observers may observe the job incumbent for a few days discrepancies between desired activities or task and actual performance may be noted and acted on accordingly let us discuss task analysis as a supervisory role task analysis can also be used as a supervisory tool to improve the functioning of an organization some uses of the task analysis are discussed below point number 1 is to design the training while carrying out the discrepancy analysis of the required competencies and the present level of competencies available in the employees concerned will help us to identify the training needs or we also call it the training need analysis and then designing a training strategy or at least training programs to upgrade the competencies which seem to be at a lower level information about the importance of the various tasks may also help to design the training program for high priority tasks it means if a person understand the significance of the job to be carried out they will do it in more focused manner similarly the discrepancy between the importance of a task and its time may give some helpful information one reason for not spending any time on a task may be the lack of competency required to do the task such information may help in indicating the thing point number 2 is performance monitoring a performance is being monitored it can help us to improve our performance level therefore a performance monitoring system can be developed based on various task processes and outcomes effectiveness indicators some of these indicators can be used in designing a format or a system of meetings for the performance monitoring purpose point number 3 is planning analysis of the discrepancy between expected and reported activities or importance of the task and the time spent on them may indicate the need for 
carrying out the work planning which also includes delegation and redistribution of work among various jobs in a work unit the concerned employees may work with the supervisor or redistribute work among various jobs in a work unit the concerned employees may also work in a group with the supervisor to redistribute task so that each employee can maximize contribution to the organization goal thank you